It's recently come to my attention that not everyone lives in these absolute massive houses on YouTube. Me being one. It's me, my wife, and two kids. My daughter is five, my son is one. Their toys take up a lot of space. I'm lucky enough to work from home as well, so my office also takes up a lot of space. But I've always dreamed of having a sim rig somewhere in the home, and well... I've never had the space for it. So we make do with what we've got. And what we've got is very nice. It's cozy, it's homely, and we're lucky enough to have a roof over our heads. I don't wanna take that for granted and start you know, moving stuff around just to have a dedicated sim rig. So let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. The guys that have come out of nowhere and created something that anyone can have in their home, which is portable, saves space, and also looks incredible no matter where you put it. And that's all down to the team at Coffee Racer. If you want to check out any of these products, they'll be linked in the description, but let's get on the unboxing and set up. And then we can actually go over the benefits as well of having said Coffee Racer. Because personally, I'm sick of having to take down my steering wheel and put it away somewhere. This is going to solve that. I kept seeing YouTube videos saying that this is the wife approved sim rig. It got me curious. Big box is the Coffee Racer Go. And I believe this is a wooden veneer top. So let's crack open this one first, get it all set up, and then we'll crack open this one, see what's cracker lacking with them both. <laughs> Promises. I wouldn't pass that up, said I never did now I haven't seen the sun in months, I can't Okay, so we were so close, but yet so far. I will warn you, if you are going to get one of these coffee racers to have nuts and bolts prepared, because we came into a bit of a pickle here. Obviously, the holes here do not have threads, neither do the plates on the on the steering wheel and same with the pedals down here but it's a good thing that I am a hoarder of anything loose bolts because I went through my toolbox as you can see there is just a jumble of stuff in there bolts everywhere like so much random bits and luckily we found four bolts and four screws so that means I can get the pedals in place and luckily with the wheel I can just use the normal desk mount until I find another four nuts and bolts but it gives me the opportunity to use the coffee racer as soon as I have it because I'm excited so I'm going to continue building it and we're going to get right to the finished product but yeah just know if you're going to get one of these make sure you got some nuts and bolts ready all right so here we have it fully built together cable managed all the good stuff this is the coffee racer go in all of its glory very minimalistic very simple let's put it down get the top on and then open up this last box So there we have it all put back together. Now obviously I do have this cable here which is the plug. So you know, that's that I can tuck away when it comes to the time. But I wanted to open up this box here because I believe it is the wooden top which looks unbelievable. Okay, this, this is nice. We go from the white top here. I like that so much better. That just looks so much nicer. It's just, it's so much more simplistic. Just adding that top bit there just makes it look that much more premium and better quality, higher quality, more expensive. But what you're getting is a hideaway rig. I can put this in the middle of the room. I can put it over here. I can put it under the desk. It will just work looking like a little unit or a little sort of side table. Absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do is set it up again, put it on the desk, finish me pasta, and then we're going to play some racing games and give it a shot. See what it's like, see the durability, the build quality, all of that good stuff, and then do a full review and uh, let you know my thoughts and opinions on what could probably be improved, what I love about this. I do have other designs out there. They are more pricey. There's one that's like over a grand, and that one does look absolutely fantastic. But this is the budget-friendly one that more people are likely to own very easy to set up as well so now i'm going to set it up and play some games she said promise me nothing's going to change going to change i've been on my brain like curse to me i've been going on my way she said i've been going on my way just to trust 
Oh, sorry, future me here. Uh, just a quick one. Since this recording, I am now partnered with Moser Racing, so everything you're going to see in the rest of this video is going to be Moser Racing and not Camos C5. But it gives me a better alternative to give you the variety that we have here uh, to obviously let you know what's best for certain steering wheels. So let's continue with the rest of the video. And told me I'm so down to earth like what you thought it was And I'm really starting to think I'm coming out and dying Starting to lose a feeling every single time we touch Can I get a warning for you switch on me? Or can you tell me to my face that you don't want me? This shit been waiting on me and I feel like concrete But lately it been seeming like I know you hardly Okay, so let's go over the coffee racer. I obviously go over my pros and cons, the build quality and so on. So let's start off with the simple thing of build quality. Now, yes, it is made out of all metal unless you get that wooden base on top. Now, there are some things with this that do concern me over time. Obviously, bolts will start to wear and tightening and loosening this thing over time. Hopefully it doesn't. But the bolts will end up being frail and not doing as well as they are now. Obviously with it being metal as well, it is quite loud when setting it up and putting it down. Because it is metal on metal, it's going to make these noises and creaks and crangs and bangs and it's very tinny, if you will. But that's how they keep the budget low. If you want the more expensive one, you're most likely not gonna have that issue with it being so tinny and hollow. But for me, the build quality is not an issue at all. For the price that you pay, it's well constructed and it does its job really well. So overall, build quality for me, absolutely fantastic. But the pros and cons list is where it gets interesting. So we're gonna start with the pros and then we'll move on to some things that maybe just be personal to me or can be improved in later models if they go down the route of making a newer version of this for the cheaper budget side, but with some variants that could be implemented into the craft. Positives for me obviously is one, the space saving is huge. To be able to put this anywhere and just save space and the simplicity as well of how easy it is to put it away. Now obviously with the Moser gear, I've got the handbrake and the gear shifter, as well as a 12 inch wheel it all fits inside this coffee racer without a problem. I thought it was gonna be a bit of an issue, obviously having the handbrake and everything as add-ons, having to put that inside here might make it a bit bulky or the lid won't shut properly. No issues at all, it goes in super simple and exactly the same as the Camus C5, which is a smaller wheelbase. Another pro is the building of said coffee racer. It's actually super simple to build and follow the instructions, if you will, to get this all up and running. There's a few things that I had to sort of figure out myself. It didn't tell me in the manual, such as if you want to tighten the bolts that do the lock-in, you have to pull it out to turn it back if it doesn't reach all the way around, if it gets caught on sides and stuff, as you can see. Um, that it didn't tell me, so I had to figure that one out myself. Other than that, you can figure it out with the bolts, you can figure it out with what goes where and all the parts just by reading the instructions. The second pro is obviously it fits any steering wheel base that they've tested. You've got the Moza R5, you've got the Camel C5 and Logitech and all of that stuff. Under Masters, the Fanatics, they all fit on this because of the plates are versatile, very adaptable to other brands. Now, obviously not every single wheel out there is tested, just go on the website or even message customer service if you do need any help with figuring out if your wheelbase would fit. They also do supply things like the chair mount that allows you to clip your chair to the coffee racer. Another pro obviously being a cockpit slash coffee table is, is actually insane to me. The fact that I can put this in the middle of the room and people would think it's a standard coffee table until I pull out a sim. That to me is a 100,000 IQ. That is Now, don't get me wrong, there's absolutely hundreds more pros about this, but I've only had it a couple of days, so I'm still figuring it out. But there's a few things that I've noticed that sort of personally to me feel like they need a little bit of adjustment. So first off being the wheelbase. Now with the C5, as you can see, you're able to make the steering wheel go higher or lower by raising the bolts. On the R5 here, you can't, it's a flat base. So it's very flat to your chest. You can't raise it up, you can't raise it lower. Now you can obviously adjust the coffee racer frame just slightly, whether it goes a little bit back or a little bit forward, but it doesn't go enough to be lower and more go-karty, if you will. So it feels very to your chest. I mean, I'm getting used to it. It's not like, you know, I can't use this physically because of that issue. That's just a personal preference to me. I'd rather a wheel be a bit more facing downwards. Whether that's what the washers were for in the package that were quite large to raise this up and then you put the longer bolts through, I don't know. I haven't tested that. But then that would also concern me about how much torque's coming out of this. It might 
snap the bolts so i'm going to leave it as it is because it still works it does me fine it's just a personal preference the second little issue that i found is with the actual lifting up and down it does take some time to get used to with having to lift up the bottom first to then pull up and then clipping it into the actual slots each side is quite difficult depending on how heavy your base is c5 i had no issues it was quite a light base where this has a heavy block on the back so lifting it up and actually getting it in the slots was a bit of an issue and one side actually went in like number three slot while the other one was in number two and as i clipped it down it bent the pin so i had to bend it back luckily it didn't snap it didn't fray but it was an issue at the start it's very hard to figure that out of how to get it perfectly in line with both of them now i'm starting to get there it's a bit more easier after a couple of times of doing it obviously like i said it is made out of all metal and it is metal on metal over time things are going to start wearing things are starting to lose tension and so forth so if you do accidentally put it in two slots wrong and it's like this it will bend the metal the metal is not indestructible just be cautious when lifting these up now as you can see i've got the handbrake and the shifter here now they are on my desk coffee racer does supply handbrake and shifter sort of extensions i don't know how that would work because if they're extended on the side here you wouldn't technically be able to put this down so i don't know how they physically work uh, it would be nice to have the handbrake and the shifter a bit closer to me but with the amount of rumble that you get from the r5 base here this doesn't feel sturdy enough to have the gear shifter and handbrake as well now i know it will handle it it will hold it but for me i don't want to overdo it you know having too much rumble in one situation while trying to change gears and handbrake you're pulling this handbrake quite a lot now i know my desk even bends so having a piece of metal that you're pulling down over time again that's going to start warping it's going to start bending so for me i personally would keep them on your desk if you do go for something like this because then also you get that versatility of being able to put it down if you've got these things attached to it you're gonna to have to keep taking them off putting them inside adds more stuff to inside so it might even not close properly there's a bit of issue with that so i think it's just a personal thing this is again my first ever rig setup normally i'd have the pedals on the floor they'd be sliding all over the shop the wheel would be on the desk that would be rumbling the hell out of all my stuff i'm not taking anything for granted i do appreciate coffee racer for sending this one out as soon as i got on this thing let me tell you the drifting the the driving everything just felt i was in the car i was in control instead of it being on my desk i could see like the tv wobbling and shaking from where i'm like ragging around corners for me this this brings stability and more immersion into the game itself because you feel like you're inside a car inside a cockpit and you just feel secure now there is obviously one thing that i don't have which they do supply is the chair to coffee racer locking mechanism because when i push the brake having the moser r5 bundle with the brake pedal accessory that makes it feel like a real brake basically and you push down it's a lot harder than a standard brake would be so as i'm pushing my office chair is actually pulling back away from the coffee racer so i'm having to pull myself closer which obviously is then putting tension on my wheel or my handbrake or whatever i'm pulling on now they do again supply the chair to the coffee racer extension that you can clip on lower your chair and it actually sits you in more of a cockpit style where the front of the seat is sitting up on a lip and the bottom of your bum is more lower like a bucket seat um, unfortunately that only fits on certain chairs like the noble chairs or secret labs it doesn't fit on ergonomic chairs which is unfortunate because if they just made the slight little adjustment or even if they made one that was sort of a versatile one that you could extend the rods so my thought of this would be for versatility obviously would be the coffee racer part that clips onto the actual coffee racer itself having two bars on a slider you can slide them back and forth you can extend them and decrease and all that stuff and then you'd be able to fit them perfectly to your base of your office chair no matter what chair you've got that would probably be the best idea for versatility i feel like they've got something so good but they're just missing the step on having it for everybody because i would absolutely die to have that because having that issue again of pushing my pedals and then getting pushed away it's a bit of a burden when i'm in a race or i'm drifting and i want to be close up to the wheel but i can't because every time i'm pushing it's it's pushing me back if they came up with some sort of versatility option that was more universal for everyone that would be the creme de la creme on coffee racer but again with all these little cons that i found they're not really cons they're more of like a personal preference or something that could be just adjusted in the future model everything else about this item is absolutely fire the way they've made something so minimalistic so small that can fit so much is insane to me that is a craftsmanship that no other company has ever found yes you can get cockpits that fold up and they go slotting away but again it's there you notice it the coffee racer you fold all this away 
nobody in the room would even notice or even think your coffee table is a sim rig that's how unique this item is and yes they may be a bit out of budget for some but what you pay is what you get and let me tell you when you get this you will not be disappointed because i have had so much more fun actually playing in this i think i actually use my camo steering wheel more times in the last two days than i have ever in the time of actually owning it because of how easy it is to just pull it in and out. So if you want to check out Coffee Racer and all of the products they have on offer, there is a link in the description and I actually beg that you go over there and just check it out because you are missing out on so much opportunity if you live in a small home or even if you live in a big home, just having something like this, such a revolutionary product that definitely is not gonna go and miss. If you pull this out in front of people, they're gonna wanna know about it. I just wanna say a massive thank you to Coffee Racer for sending this out, changing my experience on gaming all together in one simple package. And I just wanna say this before anyone says it in the comments, I haven't been paid to say any of this. I've literally always seen this product and wanted one to test. Finally, I got my hands on one. And yes, there is issues with it. There is things that I would personally change, but overall, I absolutely love it. And I think you will too. And hopefully I've also showed you watching that you can have a sim rig in your home without it being in the way 24 seven. And if you have any other questions about the coffee racer or any concerns of your own, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to start a conversation. But anyway, that's everything from me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, because there's a lot more content coming on the coffee racer and the Moser rig. So you'll be able to see it in action more often and decide whether it's something that you would invest in. But that's all, capture, create, captivate, and I'll see you all in the next video.